Before we even get to bringing in what we'll call uncertainty as opposed to risk, bringing in that yeah. to the model. Once I had a world where risk aversion was varying, then that, in a, even in a rational expectations world, then has to be factored back in because the risk aversion changing is going to then induce its own element to sure. the asset pricing dynamics. Yeah. Now, when you go to your uncertainty world, and so people are learning about the world, I think there's the way you're thinking about it. I'm, in, I'm embedded in a world that I don't yeah. completely understand, and yeah. we're learning about it as we go forward. Yeah. And which kind of predicts that as the world, you know, things, are, our view of the world, the model we're using is going to be evolving. Yeah. Not, it's not going to be static. And, yeah. and the, it, it would seem that same notion of feedback plays in now because I, yeah. I, I'm going to learn something about the world yeah. that's going to affect how I will be pricing things while I'm learning, right? Yeah. It seems like a tough problem. Yeah. I mean, is, I mean how, do no, we, how, do we, how do we deal with this? Yeah. I mean, I guess one could fold it back and say, well, I'm just going to make it risk again by having some Uber layer on top right. of the old layer that yeah. is now subject to the same principles. Yes, so you're right. So part of this is you've got to have some notion of an equilibrium construct in some way to put this all together and, and, and make it all work. Because at the end of the day, you've got markets and you want to be predicting what prices come out of markets. and so. Yes, there is. I mean, there, there are some conceptual challenges. There's uh, measurement challenges. There's just a variety of different things uh, that come into play. And let me just take a little bit of a step back. Um, one of the intriguing risk aversion stories that I thought that, 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 that um, is a so-called long-run risk story, a long-run risk model. And let me just indicate a little bit about how that works. Suppose that we take something like macroeconomic growth. The macroeconomic growth rate is moving around in a fairly in a persistent way but it's gonna be moving around. And um, maybe, um, maybe it's only a small component of fluctuations in the economy, but it's there. And so like, you know, right now there's debates going on about secular stagnation. You know, the, you know, have, was, these are debates about long-term growth prospects of things. And so it's a model that building off of a richer specification of preferences under, under risk, uh, these recursive utility models came up with this nice, interesting phenomenon whereby your concerns about long-run risk had even important implications for that short-term compensations going on in, uh, in financial markets. And because you know, your, you know, your beliefs about what's gonna happen over the long haul uh, had, uh, showed up and very prominent, could show up very prominently and even what goes on at, at, at very high frequencies inside these financial markets. So and you're I, saying even, even short, this gets back to my question from before of uh, this kind of feedback yeah, effect. So yeah. now I have this I have this long run variation, let's say, in the long run growth rate of the economy yeah. that's in some ways related to what changes in the short term. Yeah, right. And you're saying because there's this long, long run influence yeah. that the reaction to short term changes may be very different than you would otherwise think. Right. Right, and so um, some of the simplest models that, that, that have been used in macroeconomics did not have that phenomenon in, in them, and more general models kind of building up, you know, insights of, I don't know, Koopmans, Krebs, Porteous, other you know, Epstein's and people like this, put this other channel on there that, that, that researchers seized upon and, and, and showed could be really quite potent. And the way this worked is, um, if investors really knew the nature of this so-called long-run risk, that could have big impacts on these so-called risk prices, um, even over um, short investment inter intervals. Um, but it requires investors knew a whole lot. And if I look at the primitive information that I, as an econometrician, had about these trying to measure these the uncertainty and long-term growth, I was just very, very I mean, that there were very, very crude measures, and made me really skeptical about saying, are we really endowing these investors with a lot of subtle knowledge that statisticians would have would really struggle with trying to find? And it almost moved from a, what I think of as a rational expectations model to almost a, a subjective belief model because it was hard to tease this evidence straight out of the data. But then again, you could tell the story that, well, it might be in the data. Uh, if investors have complete confidence in it, it's going to show up in the prices in, in a prominent way. 
And it was just a set of circumstances. I just thought we were pushing this rational expectation lever somewhat hard, hard given what actual evidence we had and actual data. And so that was also part of what was, you know, what wanted me to think about, well, maybe it's not that investors know this uh, long-term stuff. Maybe they just think there might be important long-term consequences. Maybe we don't know how much predictable the ability there is in the underlying um, macroeconomic growth rates, but we think there might be predictability there. And, and, and that would be enough to try to get some interesting pricing calculations. So I'm trying to learn about, I mean, if you tried to build this into a rational yeah. expectations world, right, then I would be trying to learn about the volatility of the long-run growth yeah, and, and, and a key part of that is how persistent growth rates are. Yeah, uh, growth, and, but I don't know the persistence. Yeah, but, 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 but suppose I don't know the persistence. I know it's hard to measure. I mean, my, uh, my attempts at direct measurements would, would, would always leave a fair amount of uncertainty, and I wasn't quite sure how sensible it was to just give investors magically that knowledge. So as a concern is almost abusing a little bit this rationalist paradigm by, you know, by giving people almost too much information given what I thought was in, in kind of realistic histories. And so that made me want to think about the problem a little bit differently. But now are you going to have people have a common prior over these long run yeah. persistence parameters or question. are we going to go yeah. in another direction? Yeah. So one possibility would be is, is we give people a common, common prior and then we do kind of common Bayesian learning across all of them. And then you just go from rational expectations to rational learning models, the same equilibrium constructs all still apply. The problem with that alone the story I just told you about long affecting short didn't get the volatility. And so the way people got volatility into that story is they added it in the outside, stochastic volatility. You know, we're always clever in time series. If we need to get extra variation, we invent a new shock and stick it in there. Yeah. We'll call it the stochastic volatility shock, whatever that is. I actually believe there are important fluctuations in the macro economy in terms of volatility, but, I, but, but this was doing more than just that. Mm -hmm.